So uh, welcome to another thrilling video from the Tunbridge School Biology Department. Uh, this one's on osmosis in living tissue using uh, potato pieces. Uh, now these uh, chips have all been taken from the same potato and they're going to be cut to exactly 40 millimeters in length, uh, making sure to remove any skin on the ends um, and trying to keep them as uniform as possible. We also prepared a range of different glucose solutions, uh, ranging from one mole per dm cubed um, down to pure water. Uh, mole per dm cubed is a unit of concentration. Now, using a mass balance, uh, we determine the mass of each individual potato piece and record it in a data table and then the piece goes into one of the different glucose solutions. You can see here the effect of the different densities of the solutions. The potato chips will float in the more concentrated solutions, uh, but they sink uh, in the pure water and in the weaker concentrations. After an hour, uh, we're going to gently blot uh, the chips to remove any excess water on the surface, and we're going to weigh them again. As well as weighing them, we're going to remeasure them. Uh, so we're just going to remeasure the length uh, in millimeters using a ruler. As well as the measurable quantitative differences, there are also qualitative differences between the pieces. Um, the piece from the concentrated glucose is kind of very bendy in texture. Um, you might describe it as being flaccid or floppy. If you look at the one from the pure water, um, it's much stiffer, it's turgid, and it snaps easily if you try and bend it. Now, to enable fair comparisons between potato pieces that were different sizes to start with, we're going to calculate a percentage change in mass. The first thing to do is to calculate just the difference between the initial and the final mass. And then the percentage change in mass is that number divided by the initial mass times 100. I'm rounding to 1 dp here. Now, because this potato piece got smaller, uh, the change in mass and the percentage change in mass are both negative. Mm -hmm. 
where the block increases in mass, you end up with a positive percentage change in mass. We can do all the same calculations with the length data. And once again, if the block gets smaller, we'll have a negative change. And if the block gets larger, we'll have a positive change.